Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight with a look at a very hot forecast. Excessive heat warnings have already been issued for most of the inland northwest. We're expecting triple digit heat all week long. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legu with what we need to know about the potential record breaking heat. Jeremy? Well, how about this one for you? It looks like so far today, I'm just checking some numbers over here. 99 degrees is where we've topped out at. And when it's 99, that's 99 with some light math. We'll have to do actual math and see if that's 100 or 99. But we're right near 100. Right now, 96. Ugh. So today already goes down as the hottest day we've seen so far this year. And the next few are likely hotter than today. Excessive heat warnings in place through Thursday. And when it comes to our current round of heat, kind of twofold. One, yes, this is the warmest we've been all year, but two, this is the most prolonged event or most prolonged stretch of heat we have seen so far this year. All that heat is we're under a couple ridges of high pressure and those high pressure centers are just going to keep us hot, sunny and dry. Tomorrow, 103 degrees in Spokane, 101 in Coeur d'Alene, near 100 up in North Idaho. And how about that? 106 in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, Ellensburg, 107, Yakima, 108, Richland, 110. Wednesday, still hot. I mean, when it comes to the heat, yeah, it will be one or two degrees colder than Tuesday, but one or two degrees still puts most of us well into the triple digits. Eventually, we get the pattern to break, but it comes with a bit of wind. So when it comes to Thursday for us here in Spokane, yeah, it's near 100, but get this, I think we're likely talking some of the worst fire danger we have seen so far this year, both Thursday and Friday. Thank you, Jeremy. And according to the National Weather Service, heat does kill more people than any other extreme weather event. There are more yearly deaths attributed to heat compared to any other weather disaster, floods, hurricanes, even tornadoes. And with these, this extreme heat, it is very important to listen to your body. Know the signs of heat illness. If you have been spending a lot of time outside or don't have AC, watch out for your high body temperature, excessive sweating, nausea and vomiting, headaches, and any other symptom that you see right here on the screen. And if you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to call 911. Get to a cool place until help can arrive. Take off any extra clothes and start trying to cool down any way you can. You can put wet clothes on your neck, head, and armpits. Those areas, that's where we lose 70% of our body heat. And during a heat wave like this, sun exposure can become extremely dangerous. So here are a few tips to stay safe in the extreme heat. When possible, avoid exposing yourself to the sun as much as possible. It seems simple, but can make a big difference when it comes to your skin and your health. When you do go into the sun, make sure to protect yourself with high SPF sunscreen and make sure to reapply a good amount throughout the day to keep yourself protected. And the city of Spokane has now announced cooling spaces available for anyone who needs them during this heat wave. Locations include the six public library branches. They are the Central Library, Shadow Park, Liberty Park, Hilliard, South Hill, and the Indian Trail locations. All locations will be open from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. from now until Thursday. Meantime, Spokane Parks and Rec splash pads are also available for the public and they're free. The splash pads are open every day from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. at 19 city parks. And additional support is available at the Trent Shelter. The city says that shelter can serve as many as 400 people during hazardous weather. So the shelter is offering a cool space, water, meals and snacks. And starting tomorrow, the Grant County Fair is officially kicking off. Coming up at 515 tonight, we check in with organizers to see how they plan on keeping visitors cool during these extreme temperatures. Our criminal justice system has not been able to keep up with the demand our community has placed on it. Spokane County Sheriff John Knowles and other city and county leaders say a new county jail is urgently needed. That's why they're encouraging voters to approve Measure 1 on the November ballot, which will help fund the construction of a new jail. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley went to that press conference this afternoon. She is joining us live in the studio tonight to share how the new jail facility is expected to meet the increased demands in the community. Amanda? Well, Spokane City and County leaders say the current criminal justice system can no longer keep up with the number of arrests and limited jail space, which is why they say the measure needs to pass now, even though other elected leaders are asking to delay voting on this. This November, Spokane County voters will decide if they support a 0.2% sales tax increase. Revenue from that increase will fund the construction of a new jail in downtown Spokane. If Measure 1 is approved, 60% of the revenue will be allocated to the county and 40% will go to the cities and towns in the county. 
Now, the county plans to use its allocated funds to build a new community correction center behind the current jail and close the Geiger Correction Center. But we have to start today. We've waited 15 years longer to do this than we should have. These city and county leaders held a press conference expressing how urgently a new facility is needed. We are also seeing skyrocketing drug and alcohol addiction and increasing mental health needs. These needs aren't just big needs, they're urgent needs. Not only would funding for Measure 1 address overcrowding at the jail, Sheriff Knowles says it would also fund wraparound services for those in custody. A modern criminal justice system holds people accountable while also providing avenues for people to better themselves through education, through receiving therapy to change behavior. This press conference comes just days after two Spokane City Council members asked county commissioners to delay voting on this measure. Council President Lori Kinnear and Council Member Zach Zapone say they want more time to better plan how the money would be spent by the city before it goes to a vote. While this request came as a surprise to Commissioner Cuny, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward said it was not. We definitely need to move forward. Um, there is an immediacy about responding to public safety uh, in the way that we want to provide, I would say, public safety. Now, in a statement from City Council Member Zach Sapone, he said today's press conference does not change or address any of the concerns raised about Measure 1. He adds this continues to be a $1 billion blank check to government and that voters deserve to have a plan for the city's use of that funding in place. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. Over the weekend in Kootenai County, two more members of the white nationalist group, the Patriot Front, were found guilty of conspiracy to riot. A six-person jury delivered that verdict on Friday after about three hours of deliberation. And according to our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press, Wesley Van Horn and Kiernan, Mor Kiernan Morris were both sentenced to two days in jail for their role in planning to disrupt a pride event in Coeur d'Alene last year. Their judgment will be withheld. That means this conviction will not appear on any court records after their probation is done. The men must pay $1,000 in fines and will serve one year of unsupervised probation. The group's founder, Thomas Rousseau, is expected in court next month. Trials against other Patriot Front members will continue into October.